Nick Houston here with James Schaller from Clearcom. How are you doing, James? I'm doing well, Nick. Thanks for stopping by. Fantastic. Thanks for having us. We're here at NAB 2022. Uh, you guys are showing off Arcadia. We are. We're all pretty familiar with FreeSpeak 2. Mm -hmm. And then there's FreeSpeak Edge. And Arcadia is the next level. What's the, give me the idea of the levels. Okay, well, Arcadia, I think the name is really tells the story. Mm -hmm. It's a central station, whereas Clearcom has always had main stations and base stations for our wireless mm -hmm. systems. What we have really now is a central station that ties it all together. By mm -hmm. it, I'm talking about all the RF sides, as well as what's new for this show is our digital party line. So we're bringing FreeSpeak, which is the wireless intercom together, along with our digital party line. Mm -hmm. And a scalable platform. Okay, so this platform can get really big. Okay. So a couple things that are different about it is, uh, like Edge, it shares the ability to have five gigahertz. Yep. 2.4 gigahertz mm -hmm. and 1.9 gigahertz, and all at once, you can do those simultaneously. Mm -hmm. You can distribute the antenna architecture over IP, as well as our traditional E1, which you've seen in some yep. of the uh, FreeSpeak. Mm -hmm. You can tie in more four wires, okay, of eight four-wire ports, and you mm -hmm. still have the ability to bring in your two-wire, and yep. you have a party line power supply built in. That's about where it's different. Oh, and um, what's different now is a large capacity. So the smallest version of uh, Arcadia is 32 IP ports. Mm -hmm. So what takes up a port? A wireless belt pack, a channel of HelixNet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the two big ones right now. So, and a, and a channel. So you can have 40 HelixNet uh, devices on the system, but maybe you only have a production and a camera channel or so, that's only using two ports. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, you have 32 ports, that's the smallest version, but now we scale to 128 ports. So a very large system, bringing all those elements of all our RF together in one, one RU. And another uh, big, it's a very big bonus that a lot of our customers have come to us and said is they like the fact that the software is still very easy to program. It's the mm. browser-based software. Okay. So you're getting some of this functionality you see in our, um, our Matrix products, but you don't have that, that, that head space you need to get your head around the programming mm. side of it. Most of our customers who have worked with FreeSpeak and, Hel and a HelixNet, you know, they can poke around in there for about 10 or 15 minutes and kind of have a good idea how this works. We've carried over that design to the browser here on uh, Arcadia. Great, okay. And so, um, all right, so these are the different um, IP configure or IP antennas. Transceivers, right? correct. Transceivers, that's right. And one of the things to note on the, the free speak, uh, the edge up there on the far right there, if you notice, we took the antennas and brought them back out of the box. And oh. we did that because the free speak edge, which is the five gigahertz uh, version, we have 10 levels of transmission power that we can attenuate that, that uh, transmission app, and then we have the ability to remove those paddles and put some aftermarket, very specialized antennas on that. Mm, so okay. that people can really dial in a particular coverage area with multiple channels, fine tune it so that they get it just where they need it and not overstepping the bounds of their, what they need in that, that configuration. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, okay, and you also mentioned, and this is something that's interesting for our location sound people, there is Dante on this. That's right, up to mm -hmm. 64 channels of Dante. Mm -hmm. And the Dante does take an IP port. Mm -hmm. So if, you have, if you're bringing in uh, three or four channels of Dante, you're going to use three or four ports right there. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing to consider is this is a new product for us, and for Clearcom, and the, road, the roadmap for development is quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. So we're now seeing HelixNet, we're going to see towards late this year and early next year some significant developments mm -hmm. that will bring in over some of the functionality from our Eclipse products uh -huh. and bringing that into this central station. Got it. So, 120 IP ports, right? So that's 120, 128. 128, sorry. Ooh. That's 128 belt packs or Dante source or any combination, right. plus HelixNet. So how many potential, with HelixNet and this, how many potential comms can you have together all at once? You can bring up a lot. A so lot. You, yeah, I mean, that sounds like, but like for instance, one of the, the, the limitations of wireless intercom mm -hmm. is density. Sure. Okay, a lot of people, and we've seen some big events right now where 100 wireless belt packs isn't enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just not enough. And with 1.9 gigahertz, which is the, where most of us, most production companies put their, their comms at, for those types of uh, venues, it's just not enough. So with the five gigahertz, you really have the ability to get many, many more. You know, we're talking some uh, applications now of several hundred mm. wireless belt packs in one sort of RF uh, plane, if you will. Mm -hmm. So 
when you say how many can you get on here, sure. actually quite a few. And I think right now our limit is up around 96 wireless belt packs. Mm -hmm. uh, I might be off a few either way because we just increased the, the capacity. Uh -huh. but that's where we're at right now, but there's a lot more horsepower in this box. Right, but then it's also the, the hardwired ones, right? That's right. You can add those in and that's... that's right. So you have your IP ports and then you have always the four wires mm -hmm. and the party line, mm -hmm. the stage announce, the program yeah. in, all those ports are there as well too. Wow. Now, just this is the first time we've been in person for a couple of years, what has changed in the last 20 years in comms? Not just from a technology standpoint, but in how you're seeing it de deployed. Well, when COVID hit, there was a lot of fear and who's going to get sick and how do we keep production going? And in broadcast, we saw that first. So the call letter stations wanted to get everybody out of the building, so the first people we moved was hundreds and hundreds of producers and directors, okay? So we saw in broadcast this, uh, this move to be able to, to be a contributor to the production of a show, but to be outside the mm -hmm. building. Of course, in your, your market where Gotham serves, we saw then that was the next thing, okay, as film and television production, same mm -hmm. type of thing. Uh, what's interesting is people come up and ask how much of that's going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And actually from what we're hearing, quite a few people are, going, are interested in not coming back to the set, mm -hmm. not coming back into the building as often. And so there's going to be, a, I think, this, as we're seeing in many industries, this, um, this drive to keep a lot of people out mm -hmm. and away from the actual production facility. That's mm -hmm. different, I, that's not going to change, that's not going to go back. I think the other thing we're seeing is that uh, those productions where there's remote elements has been embraced by corporate mm -hmm. uh, production as well as commercial broadcast and film and television production. Mm. Okay, so, so really like the world has changed and, and connecting people with yes. communications has been a real key to that. Yeah, and I think a, a, an addendum to that is the remote quality is not just studio here, bedroom there. Mm -hmm. It's really studio in Long Island, directors in Dublin, executive producers in London, mm -hmm. and you know, animation supervisors in Toronto. I mean, mm -hmm. it's these, we're seeing these footprints that IP has allowed us to, um, to really serve. Really, these teams are very diverse and very dispersed throughout the globe. Mm. And that, that's been surprising. I mean, uh, I think regularly, I get calls from people that say, well, we have this remote footprint we want to do. And whether it's seven stories or 14 stories in a Manhattan building, mm -hmm. or it's literally across the globe. And uh, it makes it interesting and fun and challenging. Yeah, got it. Okay, great. Well, let me just check and see if there are any questions. Uh, do we have any questions from the internet? No further questions at the moment. Okay, very good, you've explained it well, perfect. Thank um, you. James, anything else you want to add while we're here? Oh, nothing, just thank you to Gotham. Okay. And thank you folks, uh, we appreciate your support. And for everyone out there, thank you for uh, spending a little time with Pillarcom. Great, well, could not have said it better myself. Um, thanks for watching. You, as always, uh, you, <laughs> I can't remember anymore. You can watch this video and more at gothamsound.tv. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and if you ever need anything, email us at info at gothamsound.com. Stay tuned for more at NAB 2022, maybe possibly. Uh, take care.